Okay, there we go. So I just want to say that yes, we have now um, 86 people on the call. As Sally's just said, there's only 100 seats. The, if your connection drops and you can't get, get back in, we will be sending out the replay later on this afternoon. So, so don't worry. Don't worry, you will get you will this. Get to you listen to up, the, you will the all get uh, 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 the, the replay of this and we'll be putting it on <coughs> YouTube as well. So we'll crack on, shall we, Sharon? Because I think there is a we lot will. to do. This is a very, I was going to call it a rough and ready, but I think it's going to be packed full of information. This time yesterday, it wasn't even on the cards. idea to have this <laughs> on the cards. So we have... No, I'm not poorly. No, I, I, I think I'm talking before I warm my voice up. I did exactly the same last <laughs> week. And I thought, oh, that's a lesson learnt. And I haven't, clearly. One thing I didn't do was, was, was warm my voice up. Okay, so hurts. on this call today, this is, we have got five topic areas that we're going to be walking you through. Um, the first one is looking at the equipment. Uh, the second thing is looking at the software. Third thing is looking at the positioning, so the positioning of um, stands and cameras. Um, the fourth thing is looking at the structure and the delivery of lessons. And then the fifth thing that we're going to be looking at is what it is you need to communicate with your parents and <coughs> your students. So what we have decided to do is we're going to, at the end of each of those sections, we are going to be hopping in and answering as many questions as we can. It's not to say we actually have all the answers at this point. Um, we are going to be certainly following up with the members of the community. We're going to be doing more and probably calling an emergency curiosity box. So um, this is really very much scratching the surface, um, but we will answer as many questions as we possibly can. So... So, should we get going? It's great yeah. to have so many, so many people here. Fabulous. So, the basic equipment. So, let's think about, um, about that. And we're going to talk about computers. We're going to talk about mobile devices. And then we're going to talk about additional equipment. So, if I start off with, with your computer, um, which might be the thing that you want to use for some people, I think the first thing you need to check out is, does it have a camera? a lot of computers do today i've got a, a we've both got macbook pros and that's really easy to use and it's quite a good quality camera um what you can see me with at the moment is the camera from from the computer yeah um Sham, Sham's on something slightly different but we'll come to that in in a moment um just check your settings you might need to go to the settings part of your computer and make sure that the, the camera and the microphone are both switched on. Yeah. So if in doubt, go to your, go to your settings. Anything else to say about that, Sharon? From no, I think that's that for now. I think we can move on and um, then look at mobile devices. So um, Sally's just covered in terms of a desktop or laptop. Mobile devices, so we're talking here, um, phones, iPads, tablets, you can see Sally's holding them up there. Um, and then it's a case of downloading, um, you know, setting up and logging on. And obviously in the second part, we'll be coming to the software options that you can actually put onto these devices. I mean, I've got a small, a small SE5, I think it is, um, iPhone, which I know are really quite small. And I think Sharon's yeah. got the same for her yeah. phone. Um, I know a lot of phones are bigger, but still they are quite small, but they're quite possible to use. Um, but you've just got to remember that the screen is really quite small and restricted, but better than nothing. Um, the iPad is definitely a better bet, you know, whether it's just a normal size iPad or an iPad Pro or a tablet, whatever it is that you have, because you've just got that slightly bigger screen. Mm -hmm. And I'll be talking more about mm -hmm. iPads and how to get those, those used in a bit. But as Sharon said, you will need to download and set up and log in to whatever software that we'll talk about in a bit, whatever software you're going to use. And that all takes a bit of time. And I don't know about you, but you know, finding keeping keeping a, a hold of your passwords can be taxing sometimes and frustrating 
okay. as you can't find your password and then you've changed your email address we've both had this recently <laughs> we changed our email addresses several years ago and we just kind of keep keep motoring on the old email address until we get to the point where we need a new password and then we discover actually it goes to the old email address that we don't have any longer it, it's frustrating but you just have to take it step by step and contact the help yeah. desk of the place that you the software is trying to do sharon any yeah, thoughts i think so uh, we have this saying at the curious piano you know, teachers how do you read an elephant one bite at a time and i know that for those of you who are not as familiar with online stuff as obviously sally and i have been doing this um for quite a number of years now um so we are aware that this is kind of second nature to us but What's important is that you don't kind of look up at this as kind of being something that oh, I would never be able to do that. We ate the elephant one bite at a time. So it is literally taking very, very small baby steps, figuring out, you know, what equipment, what, what device am I going to put, um, am I going to use? What software am I going to put it on? Making these simple, simple decisions and then following through. So many of us were in Facebook, if you have a problem with something, you either Google or you ask the question. There are people out there who know the answer and um, it is really just a, a yes, case of yeah. asking. Yeah, yeah. You know, the number of times we've sat individually and kind of tried to work something out and two hours later, you're still trying to work this thing out. And then you say, I'm just going to Google. And there you go, you've got a little video and somebody else has already had that problem and the question has been answered. So, um, you know, just, just, just be kind to yourself, take your time, just breathe deeply and uh, continue. Just keep it as simple as you need to. Yeah. Okay. So additional equipment. So that, what we've been talking about, the computers and the mobile devices. Oh, hello. Oh, it's Hannah's come to join us. Fantastic. Hello, Hannah. Hannah. Oh no, she's gone. Again. Um, all right. <laughs> I think that was an unintended Hannah. Um, so um, we've been talking about basic equipment because all, nearly all computers and obviously iPads and phones, they have the camera, they have the microphones mm. of a reasonable quality, I yeah. have to say. And certainly when Sharon and I started off, that's all we used for couple of years or so wasn't it Sharon yeah mm -hmm. and it's only as we've gone on that we have begun to sort of refine things a little bit so yeah. you'll notice actually let's talk about headphones mm -hmm. because um it's up to you really to decide whether you use headphones um Sharon and I tend to use them because you can get an echo effect so my voice if Sharon didn't have her headphones in you might hear my voice. Sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't, but yeah. you might hear my voice actually coming out of Sharon's. It reverbs a wee bit. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I think as well, when, when you actually have headphones in, you can just, this sound is a little bit crisper as well. Yes, it is. It is definitely crisper. And I think you can still hear the piano on, on the whole. Yeah. Yeah. There is a limitation in the, the, the this is only so so long in fact Sharon and I we were just saying it would be good to have a pair of um headless headphones really yeah. headless cordless cordless, cordless. Even, not headless. <laughs> the advantage okay. with having cordless is the fact that if I was to swing wine to the piano as you can see here you can see what's happening yeah so I'm either having to move um table that my MacBook is on a little bit closer so it, it does definitely make things easier to have well, you, um, you can just take okay. out one of the earbuds and then you can, you can swing around. I'm keeping the one with the mic on, but the one yeah. without the mic is coming off. Yeah, um, I can see we've got a couple of suggestions coming in here. Jeremy said, so, Bluetooth so we've come, that's... And yeah, Bluetooth yeah. extension cables. And I think that's another great idea where you can... I think, um, ab absolutely. Longer. And I, I think one... One plus point about all this that we're doing is, is it's going to extend us, I think, as teachers. I think, you know, it, it's going to make us uh, think deeper and more widely. Hello, Hannah, again. <laughs> Please feel free to stay with us. Hello. 
we're just going to keep going Hannah for a moment okay so um, no we're just going to think more deeply and widely about our teaching and you know different modes of delivery and how to uh, how to deliver what it is that we're doing so headphones um, yeah the other thing that Sharon is using at the moment is something called a webcam mm. and this is the webcam that Sharon has got this is called a Logitech and this is a Logitech HD or this is a 1080 so that means that's quite high definition and you can see at the moment this is attached to something um, but I'll come back to that in a moment and what this does is it just crisp, crisps up the picture yeah so here it is it's like that um, and it sits on the top of your computer that's where Sharon's got it and I'll do that with mine in a moment but I can also attach it look to a tripod if I want yeah Sharon thoughts from you about this while I attach mine yeah yeah this this definitely when I stopped using the just the inbuilt camera in on my MacBook this definitely created a much I mean you can actually just see now notice that Sally's picture has has changed slightly I think it kind of gives yeah it's 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 a little bit brighter it's a little bit crisper and clearer um it's letting more light in you know that's because yeah. i've got the light behind me and it's actually letting more light in yeah. so um and what that's actually really happens, what it does if it's a little bit darker there are, there are two very thin lights down the side of it so that's again going to mm. brighten um the setting okay yeah Okay, so some sort of webcam. This just happens to be one that we use and it looks quite, um, uh, uh, and, it, and it's quite highly recommended as well, yeah? Um, but there are others available. So the last thing was to talk about microphones. Now, this webcam actually has a built-in, has built-in um, microphones um, either side of the, the the actual camera um but of obviously pianos are quite tricky things um to pick up sound and the sound can be really quite distorted sometimes i can't even pretend that i'm an expert at, at anywhere close to to getting the sound really sorted but what i have got and it's not plugged in yet but i have got this thing which is called a blue yeti and you can see it's quite a big mic this is it's a blue yeti mic and it's it is on a mic stand and this is set at the moment on stereo so it will pick up the general sound and it definitely improves the quality of the piano mm -hmm. and stops the percussive sound from being quite so um so percussive and creating quite as many um vibrations i think um, yeah so that that if you're wanting to go to that level, because in the UK they cost about a hundred pounds, but you know, that's, yeah. that's looking at your next level. You know, this yeah. additional equipment is exactly that it's additional equipment. Yeah. And I, and I think, yeah, it's, I think that's a very important thing just to reiterate Sally that, you know, the, it's, it's looking at the basic stuff and making sure you've got that to get started. Additional is definitely optional. Yeah. Yeah, Ab absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right, so let's see if there are any questions from anybody down here. <clears throat> oh, we've got 104 participants. I'm not sure how that happens, but that's good. <laughs> I think it's maybe including us in there as well. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, I'm just looking for some questions. Yeah, extension cables, that's somebody said can we use a laptop yes we're on laptops at the moment yes. in fact laptops to me are better because they're more flexible i can move them around you know i can take you over here yes. yeah. yeah and you can you can tip it in terms of so yeah i do find that it's, yeah. it's what i'm, I'm using all the time yeah yeah but if you've got a, a fixed one then <clears throat> i think when you have a fixed computer then actually having something like um, um, a camera that you fix up or a webcam then that could be really useful because the 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 the, the desktop would stay and you can then move the camera that's around right. and about yeah? yeah so that thank you for that question um okay so 
Okay, that's interesting that you think my laptop had a better picture. I, I would agree at that moment. I think it's calming down now because it has to get used to the saturation because we'll talk about positioning in a minute. But behind my camera is, is a, are my French windows and the light can come streaming in there. <coughs> Whereas, and because this has yeah. got a wider aperture, it tends to um, let too much light in. So often you'll find that I do, the, I do webinars with my curtains shut, especially when it's bright sunshine <laughs> and I have the yeah. light on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Sharon, you, you have problems with your light, don't you? I do, because I have windows just um, looking out here in front of me. Um, but the problem is I do not have any curtains on, so <laughs> I cannot monitor <laughs> the brightness. So um, we, people are saying, will we write down all the equipment? Yes, I will write a blog with all this on and put you some links. So that will be published on the blog pages at some point tomorrow. Okay. And so look, look out for that tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> students are going to be coming back are, students in terms of what they need um, in the fifth section. So yes, we are going to come back and look at that and and also in terms of what is feasible via online and what isn't feasible okay so that's one thing to keep in mind you can't just have your usual piano lesson when you're teaching online just don't think you can really it's got to have some adaptions going on yeah um okay right um any other questions that we need you only, yeah, no, you don't need external mics or uh, on practically anything, I don't think. Most or, or cameras, I think majority of computers these days come with inbuilt cameras and with inbuilt mics. Yeah. If you've got an older computer, then you'd have to check that out. Yeah. yeah. Certainly iPads have the mics and they have the cameras and they're quite good quality. So, you know, your basic equipment is probably what you've already got. You've just got to set it up so that it's ready to receive, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. A um, couple of other questions that I'm just seeing are coming in. We can come back and check, but I think that any other questions we are getting there, we are coming to in the next four sections that we talk about. Yep. So if we haven't answered your yep. question, it's yep. just because we are we will get there okay yeah yeah um yeah i'm just, yeah. just reading just quickly from jenny so she says how do you test your equipment you, you kind of run a um, run a test you know you you set it up you you try it out maybe you have an ipad in one room and your phone in another room and you actually communicate with yourself or you find a friend. Yes. In fact, I was reading this the other day in the Curiosity Lounge. I think that's such a good idea. Why not find a, a, a practice buddy for doing these kind of tests on each other? And yeah. then you can feed back to each other how it, how it, yeah. how it works. Yeah? I think that would be such a lovely idea. Yeah. Ah, okay. Shall we move on? I think so. To the software. Yeah, to the software. So the first thing we want to talk about really is your Wi-Fi. Um, and we are talking about you now, but of course, all this does apply to your student. Yes, but we'll deal with that separately in, in a little bit. Um, I mean, Sharon has some problems with Wi-Fi occasionally, don't you? I, do. I have a fairly stable Wi-Fi, but we both have Wi-Fi boosters these days because we find that we'd like to just have a stronger signal. Any, any thoughts on that, Sharon? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not going to unplug it, but it's, it's sitting right over here. I have um, a series of these there. Um, I will get the name for the, um, for the uh, when Sally goes to write the blog. Um, so the exact information is there, but it's a BT one. There's lots and lots of different types on the market. I don't think there's, um, there's, there's a huge amount of difference and it's certainly when I go on I just make sure that I'm connected to that one because there is a booster here in, in the room. Um, and do you know what I really do, Sally's just said that I struggle um, with my Wi-Fi connection at the best of times, but hey, 
I can still do a huge amount online. So, you know, if I kind of feel that if, if my internet connection manages quite a lot of this, I'm sure that um, you guys, the internet connection can't be much worse where you are. Mm, yeah. I mean, things that you can do to help um, is to make sure that nothing is syncing on your computer. I mean, we quite often have um, our drop boxes syncing and we absolutely recognize instantly the, the, the drop in quality. We go underwater, as, as we all like to say. <laughs> Could you say that again, Sharon? I didn't quite pick you up. Yeah? So um, just that, that is one thing. Make sure nothing is sinking. Yeah. I think and also not thing... to have a whole row of tabs open or something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess the other consideration is, and I know that this has um, come up within our, our, our members lounge, is you know, what happens if you have... Um, you know, wife, husband, partner, who is also working from home. Um, because then of course, the more, you know, the more uh, devices that are being used in, in the house, the more that's going yeah. on then, it's going to kind of sap any, yeah, yeah. What, what you've got. So that is another consideration that certainly if you were scheduling in round time, let's say, you know, when my husband comes home to do stuff, that it's 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 not at those times that he is using the internet as well. Ideally, because that will. And I, I think a, a degree of negotiation is going to be required. To be honest, because I think so many, if this goes the way it seems to be, I think there's going to be an awful lot of us working on the internet. And you know, we can't give you advice absolutely on what to do here, but you will need to negotiate about who can have the internet priority, if you like, um, at any one time. And it might be a shared thing. It might be a shared thing. Yeah. Um, we know, but we don't, we know, but we don't know um, <laughs> anything about dongles, to be honest. So if anybody has got any information about dongles that they would like to share, we know it's possibly an option um, uh, for providing uh, yeah. internet access when you're not... Yeah at home to teach and um you have a studio somewhere else sharon so yeah so a dongle is basically where you will plug into your device and you will then rather than actually connecting to wi-fi um or a hardwired internet connection you will get it through this dongle um obviously there's 3g and 4g as well i mean certainly where i live that would not be anywhere near reliable enough to, to stream anything like this but um we know that people have come back and said, you know, I, my piano is at my studio, but my studio does not have internet. Dongle may be an option there. Yeah. And as I can see, Brian has just pointed yes. out that you can use your phone, your 3G or your 4G network as a hotspot. Okay. So that is yeah. another option. But clearly, if you're doing hours and hours of teaching via the internet, via your 3G and 4G, then you need to make sure you've got enough data. Yes, yeah. and, and that might mean that you've got to upgrade the, the amount of data yeah. that you're, you're having. Yeah, it's, I think it's just checking out, yes. I mean, I, I'm looking here, obviously, um, someone there, you know, in terms of un, un, unlimited uh, data plan, which of course is, is going to be ideal, but it, it could get quite expensive if you were having to, to just kind of to, to add on. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to pick up Wendy's point. She's saying that um, my voice and uh, picture are, are syncing fine, but Sharon is slightly behind the time. And this is partly one of the, the, the problems that Sharon has with her internet. And she's worked for many years with her counsellor to try and change it. But you're at the end of the line, basically, yeah. aren't you, Sharon? Is that what it is? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, yeah. my connection uh, yesterday completely dropped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Okay, okay. Um, I think let's move on and we will look yes. at the yeah, software. So um, there are four main things we're going to look at here. We've um, Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, uh, and we've just more recently put down WhatsApp as well. And I can see that someone here has already asked a question about WhatsApp. 
Yeah. Okay. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with, with Skype. I think it's probably the one that most people are familiar with um, after FaceTime um, and possibly WhatsApp. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Because we all have our own individual little um, preferences, I think. Yeah. Um, Sharon and I, we meet once a week on Skype. It's just kind of the place we go to, isn't it, for, for that sort of meeting. And, you know, we, we quite like it because it's free to use. It's really easy to install. Um, we can share our screens via Skype and um, we can even, you know, have there are little emojis that we can say how much we're liking each other or what we say. <laughs> we don't tend to use those very much. <laughs> but I was just thinking in the lesson situation, I think that would be really quite a, an interesting little idea to, to use. Um, I think the picture and the sound quality, though, can be variable. Yeah, can be variable. And certainly there have been times in the past where we've actually had to stop and come back out and then start again. And most of the time it's slightly better the second time, I would say. It is affected, however, by the weather. Definitely notice mm -hmm. that, you know, the, the weather um, does change the quality of it and also the time of day. So Sharon and I will tend to meet in the mornings quite early. And um, I think the quality then is, is reasonable. But then I know that as the day goes on, more people, um, you know, are taking up the airwaves. And sometimes you can, I, you can struggle a bit more with it, I think, on the yeah. whole. Yeah. yeah. Um, any other thoughts, please do put in about Skype. You would need to download the app, which you can do from the App Store or the... the google play or wherever it is the android store yeah. and um and get yourself signed in if you haven't got an account then you just sign up for that account yeah and then whoever you're going to talk to you need to actually make contact with them so you'd yeah. need to send them a, a request okay um and just a quick thing here i'm seeing that catherine is asking about is google hangout still a thing no it's not so that's um no. It's no longer an option. Um, so then looking on, so that is, that is Skype. Um, FaceTime is, uh, is another option. Um, the one significant thing is that if you have an Apple device, that's fine, you can use FaceTime, but the other person, so in other words, your student, also needs to be an Apple user, okay? So yeah. you both need yeah. to be Apple users in order to connect via FaceTime. Um, it's um, not dissimilar to Skype. Um, it's not something that I would tend to use a lot. Um, I mean, I think my preference is Zoom. Yeah. Sally? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing we didn't say about Skype is that you can actually get the student maybe to record the lesson. So um, I think that that is also quite useful. They can record it from their end. You don't need to do it. You could do it as well. But then I think you do get into into child protection things that we're going to talk about in a bit. But, you know, get the student to do the recording and then they've got it and they can watch it back, which can be really useful. I don't know whether you can do that on FaceTime or not. I'm kind of assuming that maybe you can. I know that I can get FaceTime on my Apple computer as well, but I know mm. the screen or the size of it is, is, is rather small, I find it personally, and it has a different kind of um, uh, uh, aspect to it. Yeah. And as, as I say, I'm not entirely sure whether or not you can record on it or not. If anybody knows that, then please do feel free to share, as you are all doing here, which is just so fantastic. Um, our preferred um, piece of software to be honest is Zoom and that is what we are on at the moment. We are having this webinar via um, Zoom. We have used them now for maybe three years or so and we find them to be very reliable and to give quite a good quality. Now we're on a paid plan 
but there is a free plan that you can use for one-to-one -one stuff and you can have group meetings that last for 40 minutes which is great because it means you could have you know as i'm not sure whether it's up to 100 or certainly 10 you could probably get 10 screens on all at the same time after 40 minutes it will stop but that's fine you can set up the next one <laughs> and do do another one for another 40 minutes if you yeah. want okay yeah um and you've got different i think the other thing that i quite like with zoom is you do have different views so at the minute we're on gallery view but if i click a button um oh wait no sorry this is okay we were on gallery view then this is speaker view yeah so basically what i'm seeing is where Sally is, I'm not so sure who's on your big screen, whether it's Sally or whether it's me, but, um, and then I, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing Sally full screen and I can see myself on just a smaller screen. So it's quite nice actually that you do have, um, have that control. I normally am on gallery view when I'm, I'm doing uh, webinars like this. Um, so, and you've also got, you've got chat as well. Um, so, I think with um, with Zoom, there is certainly there's a, there's a quite a lot going for it. Um, it would be a case, I, I guess. One other consideration when Sally and I were talking about this this morning is that with Skype, it's like where you have an address book. So um, we're coming to talk about this in a minute. You know, how do we actually get to the point where you are connected and actually your student is um in front of you on screen now with skype it's a case of you have your address book so everyone goes in there so you go in at the designated time and one or the other can can easily call with zoom it is about sharing links so there may be just an extra step involved to make sure that the link for that particular call has been has been sent and Sally, I don't think we were entirely sure whether or not you can use the same link multiple times. Again, no, we, you can't. Yeah, I'm no, I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure that you can. can. So you're having to then set up um, and email or message across um, the the link for that particular week's lesson. I, I'm just going to pop in because I, I know there's various record things going on here now. Um, I, I think it's it's. Um, Brenda who's saying you know she uses zoom and she sends the link straight through to the pupils I think you use whatever you want to and then you say to your 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 pupils this is what we're doing it on what we're doing here is giving you the options that are available for you to make that choice so yes like Brenda I would absolutely use zoom and I would just send the link to the parents and say see you on there yeah that's after we set everything up, of course, you know, we've got to talk the parents through this whole process. Um, some of them might know, some of them might, might not know, but um, that's definitely, I think, the thing to do. You make that decision yeah. and then you inform the parents what it is you're going to do. And I think it's probably going to be something that, you know, parents are having to get a grip with sooner rather than later. I yeah. have just seen yeah. here a message from Gillian um so obviously as of from today until the 29th of march all schools universities and college um are closed in the south of ireland so that's obviously news and obviously. so parents yeah, are obviously yeah. having to get because i know um certainly you know it's it's been schools have been talking for a while and saying you know it's not just a case of kids you're out of school they will be continuing, I think, with the aim, certainly, of A-level and GCSE exams continuing on. So parents will have to be kind of, you know, moving in this yeah, direction yeah. Um, yeah. and going online with regards to their, their, their children's schooling. So this is not going to be entirely new. Um, and I think that certainly for us as piano teachers and instrumental teachers in general, for us to be ahead of the curve, to have a plan, and really, we're, we, we are wanting to, I think, action that plan, whether or not you want to have it in that place where you're sending out notifications saying, this is what's going to happen if such times come, or whether you want to just implement that um, immediately. That's, that's not a decision we're going to, um, to advise you on or make, but it's just where you have a plan, plan in place. That is the most important thing. Um, and so that you're ready to run yeah. 
because I think as as professional piano teachers that gives a message out um, to your parents that um, you know you're ahead of the curve in this and you are equipped mm, and ready. Yeah. Mm. Brenda's just pointed out thank you so much Brenda that you you what you do to use the same link again is you use recurring meeting thank you Brenda we just don't do that here so it's when you you start to do that that you, yeah. then you begin to learn the systems thank you Brenda for that recurring meeting absolutely and also um, Brenda is also what well, somebody mentioned this idea of many cam how to get more mm. than one um, shot um, and that really brings us to this idea of positioning and stands and things. So um, I think, you know, without spending any money at all, you've just got to experiment. And, um, you know, there are various options available. I'm just going to show you what my, what my um, computer is sitting on at the moment. I'm just going to bring my camera around. So this is quite my... <laughs> this is behind the scenes of the Curious Piano Teachers, yeah? So I've just got it on a table here. <coughs> and then I've got what are called yoga blocks here, but I could just as easily use some some big big boxes or some big bits of music. Here's one I had ready earlier. Look, okay, so can you see that? No, yeah, yeah, just a big box, so yeah. I can stand it on there. Um, or I'm just putting it back up here. Or as I say, big books or anything at all that just puts it at the right height for you. And then, you know, this I've discovered is quite handy because I'm close to the keyboard. And this is just using my laptop and, and yeah. even if I did it without the yeah. um, camera attached, I've still got that available. Yeah. Um, anything to add to that, Sharon, about doing it ad hoc? No, I think it's, I think it's fine. And I, th I think, do you know what, let's go back with this eating the elephant one bite at a time. It's not about kind of going, I'm not going to do everything until I'm, if I've got every single duck lined up, go with it. You will learn. You'll, you'll, that's what we do. You know, we make little tweaks, we reflect and go, oh, actually, if I've done that. And sometimes you have to get going to actually figure out the things that you, you get a bit frustrated with, and then you can, you can look at solutions um so yeah so the other thing that you might consider if you want to go a little bit further than just the ad hoc system is a tripod so i've i haven't i'm not using it at the moment my husband does some photography work and has done in the past so i've got quite a nice tripod here and that's great because it actually gives you such flexibility for changing the height of, of the camera and also you know it's um, I can change the the angle of the camera and the direction of the camera so I can get really quite over the keys and I've also got here a boom stand and I know there was conversations about boom stands yeah so this is a mic boom stand but basically I can use I can put a camera on the top as well because as long as it's got a thread at the end you can see I'm going to unscrew it here then I can I can actually fix um, some cameras to it as well and again that will fit look very nicely over the keyboard so that could give me that over keyboard shot that I know a lot of you a lot of you want um, and the third thing I wanted to mention that I've just put somewhere and now I can't find here it is is this which is called a gorilla pod mm -hmm. This is my gorilla pod. That's not quite complete actually. It's got another bit on the top that I forgot to put on there. And the gorilla pod, I can take the camera and I'll just screw it up here. Excuse me, I'm probably going to put you around in circles for a minute while I put this on. <laughs> um, and then, okay, keep talking, Sharon, while I do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking through um, some of these comments. Yeah, that's actually quite encouraging. Someone here, is it Becky? I can I can't guess see it. I have 160 students at my music school and only had one complaint that we would be switching to online lessons during this period. Um, and yes, even from the, the other things that people are saying, you know, we are doing this um, for the health of our communities. It's not to say that every yes. single one of yes. us is yes. a vulnerable one, but the people we are in touch with may be vulnerable. And this is where um, we do have to be, um, we do have to try very cautiously. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is the gorilla pod. Yeah. yeah. 
and the, the as louise is saying she's got one and it's fab and it is fab because it's got bendy legs look <laughs> so it can it can sit in all sorts of quite precarious places so it's not quite attached properly there but i had it on top of the piano the other day yeah just sort of doing this and looking yeah. down yeah over over like that yeah? what you Something can like do is if you lift this up sally has a grand piano i have an upright if you lift yeah. this up um, and then it will just, um, mine will attach in here. Um, just do what it looks like. Okay. Yeah, it's not quite in the right angle yet, but you see, you, you, and then you just end up playing with it a little bit. I'm not saying this is the perfect shot above the keys, but it's certainly an option, just doing it like that. Yeah. yeah. Better with a boom stand, but um, that's, as I say, it's just an option. Yeah. Um, the other thing that, I'm gonna put this on here for a second. The other thing maybe to, to consider is the light. Now, this is now very interesting because of course, you've seen my light change quite yes. a lot you've seen the quality of my picture change dramatically and look at sharon now she's being yeah. flooded with light because it's yeah. coming through the, the curtains through. or through yeah. she doesn't have curtains so on your computers the the camera is really small so there's a tiny bit of light that can come through and so the quality is is reasonable this uh, Logitech has got a better quality of camera, but you do have to control the light that's going on. And I think the first thing we learned was you must have the light behind the camera for the best quality. Yeah? The light must be behind the camera. So I've left over here a light that I often have on when I'm teaching. And I'll just go and switch it on so you can see the change again. Hang on a second. Yeah. I mean, the other thing, just as Sally goes and does that is, that um, it's not to say that I need to be at the piano all the time. Now, normally the times that I would be teaching, if I was to keep my schedule of students exactly in their same slots, the sun by that point um, will have generally moved around, so it's, it's not a problem. It tends to be around this time, coming up to midday, that if there is sun, it just streams in um, where I really don't want it to come. So, um, but it's not to say that I will necessarily be at the piano to do things. We're going to look a little bit more about the structuring and delivery um of lessons in in a moment sally yeah yeah so i i put the light on behind me it's actually fine because i've mm. got the camera quite close to my face and the quality of the the definition i think well i'll be interested to hear from you lot i think the quality is actually better now than it probably has been um all all webinar um again the light behind i've got the french windows here if you have a little look and look at the light streaming in there okay yeah. So what I, it, it's worth just playing around and don't expect to get it perfect because we're still, we're still learning, aren't we Sharon, as yeah. you can see today. Um, and it, it is a question of playing around. And, you know, when I do a Tuesday teaching tips, it usually takes me at least 15 minutes to get myself set up in what I think is a reasonable, um, a, a, a reasonable position. Okay. And it depends on the day. I'm just going to go and switch these lights off. Yeah. Okay. 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 So nice. let's move on. Just a quick thing is actually, yes. yes. Um, Miriam, you're absolutely right. We seem to have moved under positioning, but suggest you really would cover WhatsApp. Yes, you're right. Yes. Let's just briefly go back to WhatsApp. So I know this is something Sorry. that you use a little bit more than I do. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm not a, a WhatsApp user, to be honest, but I am a member of a couple of groups and yeah. I speak to my sister sometimes via WhatsApp. Um, so it is an app. I only have it on my phone, although I have been told you can download it on the on onto your desktop, but I haven't done that. Um, and um, I find the screen, as I said earlier, I have a small phone, so it's it's a small screen. But you can set up what at what WhatsApp groups that are completely encrypted and secure, um, and therefore you can communicate directly with parents um, when you're wanting to talk to them. And you can do video calls, obviously, on there as well. So if anybody else has got WhatsApp experience, it's definitely worth exploring 
if you think that is something that you've been using in your life anyhow and it is a, a, a possibility okay so any any whatsapp information would be useful yeah. okay so let's move on to this structure and delivery of lessons then shall we sharon because i know people have got a lot of questions about this and I, th I think the first thing for us to to just mention is child protection and to be honest we are going to go to a higher authority um, our, our professional body to find out what their child protection uh, policy is on giving um, lessons via the internet I think fairly you know basic common sense will apply in that I would say I would always want the parent in the room on the other end and I wouldn't communicate directly with the pupil via their email. I would always do it via the parents. Um, but we will be finding out and reporting this back to our community of piano teachers about what, what the right way is going about it. And I think wherever you are in your country, again, go to your professional body yes. wherever you are and find the information from them. Um, I, we are not the people necessarily to give that correct information. Yeah. We can't, yeah, yeah. okay. So let's, um, let's move on to this, this, this question of, is an online lesson a valid and a valuable replacement? Could, yeah, Sharon. Yeah. I think it absolutely is. And it was, it was quite interesting yesterday. I mean, Sally and I have been looking through things, conversations that pop up on Facebook. And um, I think that the very clear message to give out is, especially for those teachers who have been saying, oh, I, I'll need to discount my lessons. In the sense that you are still offering tuition, the pupil is still learning. So, nothing will have changed in that respect and as sally and i were talking about this a little bit more this morning i mean what becomes where you can give a very ad hoc type style lesson um when a student comes in i mean i remember doing them for years before i was i was more educated about it um so when you give online lessons you will have to plan there you really will need to make sure that you have all the resources all the bits and pieces that you know what you're doing because if you don't then there will be things that you won't be able to do because you're not ready to do it so um you will be spending more time inevitably delivering um lessons and i do i i we see no reason why you cannot continue to charge what you would charge and sometimes i actually wonder whether with this additional planning um and deep thoughtfulness it's really it's all right it's, it's quite an exciting opportunity for us as piano teachers to put you know a lot more thought into what we're doing um will there actually be more effective learning so i think let's look at it in a really optimistic way because um, yes, there will be challenges. It's not to say that it is going to be exactly the same. Sally has just said, you know, where, you know, things, especially if you're listening to, you know, um, a Bach prelude and fugue or something, you know, uh, all of those fast notes will probably go underwater. Well, there's video and students can send us videos, but there are so many other things that we can do that equals deep learning for the student maybe deeper than, as I say, those ad hoc, non-planned for lessons. So I think we can really make, make full use um, of the opportunity that we have here. And for us to, I mean, at the Curious Piano Teachers, we say that, you know, what we do is we, we learn as much as we teach. And I think that it's, it's exciting in that this will really bring it to the fore for us. Sally. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I would say again that this will not be the same as a face-to-face -face lesson. It will have a different feel and probably slightly different content and certainly you've got to be creative in the way that you deliver that and it makes us dig down to what the essentials are doesn't it? Mm. Um, quite often we get stuck 
I think I'm speaking personally, we get stuck in a technical thing and, you know, with, with, a, with a pupil and, and we just go on and on and on about it. And actually, all we're doing is trying to work through what, what we need to teach that pupil about how to do that. And we're trying to kind of get down to the problem that we think might lie there. And um, sometimes we just need to walk away and think it through. And that's what we can do when we're teaching online is we can think it through and then send through a video of here's a here's here's several solutions here's several strategies to um to what we're doing and what we're doing is definitely just as much of value and it's really good to hear from people like liz liz um is saying that you they've done skype lessons for quite a while while teachers have gone traveling and uh you know they've never had um, any suggestion that that should be discounted because it's just the same. And in fact, you know, you, you will be spending more time setting up than probably you will just on delivering that lesson. Um, I, heard, I, I read the other day somebody is suggesting an emergency timetable, and I think that's right. I think there will be. I think you'll have to rethink your timetables and... Um, <clears throat> yeah have an emergency timetable i would even suggest that um for some pupils i would prefer to do two if they're going to be sent home from school and they're at home all the time then i'm going to be thinking about doing two 15 minute online sessions a week rather than yeah. one half an hour whatever long one it is it all depends on the on the age and the appropriateness, I think, of the pupil. And it was interesting to read. I think it was Wendy just putting there about one younger child who she thinks is going to be tricky. And I think there will be students for whom doing online learning is going to be more challenging. Um, I can think of my special needs girl. And, and I think me teaching her, she's 18, but, you know, struggling to engage on a one-to-one -one level in lessons sometimes and i think trying to do that via a computer via a screen will be interesting just be interesting to see um but then i think maybe you start project work and stuff like that and send through recordings as sharon said um so um yeah i, th I think we have to be uh, thinking about how we deliver this and thinking maybe of a fresh up fresh approach i just want to share with you one thing that i think is going to be absolutely central to me giving lessons online from home and that is continuing to use a practice app um, and this practice app that i personally use and that i would really highly recommend is called cadenza and i am actually going to show it to you and um, i'm just going to get it ready I'll show you the airdrop in a minute. I've got that ready as well to show you, but um, I don't know whether how many of you have heard of Cadenza, but I'm just going to get my pages ready. Then I'll come over and make sure that, yeah, here we go. So I'm just going to share my screen now and I can get it back here. So this is the other good thing about Zoom, you see, is I can do some sharing with you. And yeah you can do that obviously with your students as well so you should be able to see now as well as me in the corner yeah. you should be able to see my cadenza now this is a an online tool and again i will put it into um, a blog for tomorrow that has been developed um, by some academics uh, professor rena upatis in um, canada and it's now up and running as an independent practice app i've used this for a couple of couple of years students love it i know it's not the only one there are others there and i think again it's what you're used to but if you haven't discovered cadenza i think it does have some unique features going for it now this is me pretending to be me so this is me the teacher and here we go this is my i'm not going to show you my list of students because obviously that's um uh, um Bit classified really but this is i'm i'm one of my own students because i like to see what i'm doing and what you do is you set up a lesson so here's a a, a lesson i started today and when as a teacher i go in here i set up a task 
unusually if a student is in a lesson I will do that along with the student and if I wanted a new task I'd click on that and I get all these options so I'm going to say this is now a piece of repertoire and I'm going to put oh, I don't know Mozart in there for example and this is the number of times we want to practice it maybe five times and then I can continue to um, to populate that with things but you'll see here it says media attachment and teacher attachments so I can attach to this particular um, task PDFs videos audios almost anything I can put it I can also put here links you can see you've got a link button to take them to a specific page okay so let's just go back to the arpeggios because this is one I made earlier now I didn't know that I was going to be doing this this webinar today and actually with my students on Monday I or with myself I created um, a whole series of videos short videos on arpeggios because I run out of time to do everything in my lesson so I don't rely on the 30 minute lesson instead I record material and I assign it in cadenza so that students watch that at home and actually I teach them when they're in their own home via the videos and I'll show you this video in a minute you can see it's here and well that's an audio that uh, when you click on that it will download but this is the really magic thing the media annotator and um, I'll show it you from the moment from my myself as a pupil view in a moment and what this does when I record these videos it makes me think through what it is I need to teach and so I can be as con concise and precise and accurate as I can so I'm not flanneling now <laughs> I'm not thinking on my feet I'm not doing reflection in action as we often have to do uh, on a piano lesson instead I'm I've made a little list, I've got it on a post-it note, and I'm demonstrating to the pupil in a very, very precise way. And then it's up to them to try it out. So I'm just going to skip over now and see if you follow me now to this page. Have we changed? No, it says it's cool. Okay. Okay, so let me just see if I can I'll probably have to stop that share. Yeah. And share again onto a different page. It's having to move clearly. Okay, so I'm going to share again now. Yep. And now this is me as student. You can see that the, the color is different. I'm now blue. And this is my view as a student now of that very task I've just set. There is the task as um, it has the a clock there so as soon as that gets clicked and it, it clicks almost automatically um, and it will time the amount of practice I've done I can actually do a little reflection on how that's feeling and I can end my practice here now here okay all right okay I'll probably have to all right let's watch this media annotator let's see if this is going to work or not so I think the magic thing for me, is this going to work or is this not going to work for me? Of course, I set it up just beforehand and now it's not going to do it. Let's do it from here. Is it going to work? OK, I think it's probably because I'm online as well. Let's see. Too much overload, it's saying, overload. but I will show you one of the, I will sh I will show you one of these videos in a minute. But you can see that I am able to put in mm -hmm. sort of specific actions for particular numbers for particular moments in in that video. I think if you haven't explored Cadenza, it's worth doing so because in this situation, it provides a wonderful bridge between the online lesson and the student home. There are other things that you can do, of course, and, um, you know, practice notes and sharing those all have to be considered. But this is a really kind of all in one package that I would really, re really recommend, although I appreciate it's not for everybody. So I'm going to just stop my share. And see. What people are saying.
Okay, so people are saying that if we, uh, if you haven't used Cadenza in the past, it can be a, a, a big, yeah, it can be. I think if, if you're not used to using it, it might be too much to take on. And it could be that it's a phased introduction. You know, you might decide to, okay, well, let's try this. Let's, let's share things via Evernote or, you know, depending on the yeah. age of the pupil, yeah. We get out, and that's just one of the practice things I use. You know, both Sharon and I, we like to get our pupils writing things down. So get the pupils to write down their lesson notes, and you do the same, and you you instruct them. Yeah. So what are you going to write down mm. over there today? Mm. Can you read back to me what it is you've written down? All these things are are useful things to do. Sharon, I'm just going to take my gorilla pod off. So go back on the computer. Uh, from you any thoughts yeah no I, I love all that and I, I i think yes it's all of this is is to show you what's out there some of it is going to really it's going to really stretch you if you haven't done anything um technologically yeah so it is just that thing about one small bite at a time do what is right for yeah. you at this point in time um and you know that's where curiosity often takes us you know to places that we never thought we would actually yeah. be able to go um, yeah. um there's just yeah there is a small cost to the teacher i think i just have a small studio so i've got i've got 10 students on the cadenza um app at the moment it's about I think it's about 10 Canadian dollars a month, which isn't really very much. No cost at all to the students. No cost to the students. Yeah. Um, I think, yes, if this is you to start, I think low tech is good. Just go in with the basics. Just go in with the basics. Okay. So this is if you're wanting to take it a little bit further. Um, getting the students to write the notes, definitely a, a, a good thing, essential thing to do. The work shouldn't all just be down to you. It's their learning. You want them to take charge of the learning. It depends on the age of the child. But if, if the child is too young to take the notes, then the parent needs to be there supporting, which is exactly what mm -hmm. we'd say in a piano lesson, to be honest. Exactly what we'd say in a piano lesson. Yeah. Um, um, I'm just even seeing Wendy here is saying about liking the idea of pupils writing their own lesson notes. And, you know, I would even go to say, even with the younger ones, don't worry about it taking a little while to get them to write it down. I find that in the longer term, actually giving and passing onto them that responsibility for their own learning is just invaluable rather than us kind of doing it because it's quicker, but it's actually passing on as much responsibility as possible. So um, it's it's definitely worth doing. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Just wanted to talk about planning very briefly you know planning that content just have a short create a short concise plan for for that particular lesson with maybe just one or two goals um make sure they're goals for the pupil um not just learning activities a learning activity isn't a lesson plan the learning activity like we will they will play arpeggios Okay. Yeah. But what do you want them to learn? Yeah. You want them to be able to play and name the notes in the C major arpeggio, which is actually what kind of my, my thing was there um, that I tried to show you. Um, and screen sharing was another thing I was going to show. Do, uh, we want, do I want to show that yeah, or not? I, th I think so. Cause that's actually quite, I think that's quite useful. Sorry. Um, okay. I'm just going to answer a quick question here um, from Edwina who says, do you feel you get the same result from an online lesson as a personal one? I do very passionately feel that learning, powerful deep learning can still happen online. Um, you know, Sally and I have been doing this, I mean, back when we started the Curious Piano Teachers, um, almost five years ago, we did have a bit of a limiting belief about what people could learn online. Um, mm. And it's, 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 it's different, like Sally has just said, you know, it is going to be an online lesson is going to be different. But actually, I think that um, we will be thinking more and there is then the potential for a lot, even more deep learning from, from our students as well. Um, it, it does require 
creativity and curiosity, mm -hmm. um, which is why inside mm -hmm. the members area, we are going to be looking at this a lot more. As we can see, the people are definitely, it's especially just literally with us being on the call and having heard that all schools across the south of Ireland and colleges and universities are closing. It really is, it is a matter of time. Um, as I think even someone has said, you know, for when the UK does this and indeed probably other countries as well. So um, I think let's just be excited about the challenge. Yeah, I, I, uh, Sharon and I were saying earlier, it's, it's like this big, huge research project, you know, we've never done this like this before in, in this kind of number. And actually, who knows how it's going to go. I can see that in the short term, I think it's a very viable, uh, very viable alternative. And I think we are really fortunate that we can do this. And that's my feeling at the moment, yeah. because there are many professions that are going to really, really struggle. But I think we can we can deliver something that is worthwhile and and has an impact. How long we can do that for will be interesting. Let's keep an open mind because we don't know how long this is going to go on for. I mean, if we're all in a sort of a, a, a restricted situation, then children are going to go stir crazy, basically. And they're going to get really quite bored quite quickly because as much as they might not like going to school, the school provides a structure of the day and we all need structure to our day. And, you know, that's go, the same goes for parents. So this could be a really useful kind of pillar of a week that they have a piano lesson with this calm, authoritative figure who kind of knows what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think there could be a huge be benefit, Edwina. I'm absolutely with you on yeah. that. Yeah? yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, we, I go back to this idea that we're musicians first and we're pianists second. So the pianistic things, yes, we can deal with technical stuff. What is harder to deal with, and we probably haven't quite talked about that yet, is the detailed material. I know, I think Sharon did mention it, you know, that if you play a big run of scales, you know, the, the, the internet will overload. It can't take in that much data of information all at any, any one time. So that's the sort of thing to focus in on recording, that you ask the pupil to record their performances and send it through to you. And then you can comment on what you hear and uh, what went well and what didn't go well. Yeah. Um, and you can video back your response, can't you? And demonstrate. Um, and I think one thing that you can do, again, a, a, an app on here that I'm going to show you is something called Note Maker. And it is part of the Cadenza app because what I love about this is this ability to write comments on exactly the moment where the problem, the problem is. So other things you can do as well, of course, is, is um, share your screen with your student. And I'm just going to try and demonstrate that now via something called air server. So I have on my screen, I have that, that is an, uh, a little app that you can download called air server that's certainly one for mac and on my screen at the moment i have got uh, a qr code and i just hold up my cat my ipad and it's asking me to connect so i'm going to do that i got it there we are and then i'm going to start screen mirroring and i am now mirroring and i am going to now share my screen so that you can all see what I can see. So here we go. I'm mm -hmm. just going to bring it enter full screen. There we are. So this is my iPad. You're all looking at Sally's. There we go. This is my iPad. And you can see, here we go. We can share a piece of music together. How magical is that? I can even write on it. Now, I'm not sure whether I got this. I Oh, there we go. And kind of go like that, or what about that note, or what about these passages going down here? Do you and Sally, I think this is so powerful. Yeah. Because do you know sometimes it can be so easy in a lesson to go straight, nearly too soon to the piano, um, 
for those who are members, we are um, currently this month looking at memorization. And we've been doing analysis of music. Yeah. And, you know, this can be done so easily um, online. You can just yeah. see how everything kind of comes to life um, with what Sally's doing there. There we go. We've got yellow and blue. <laughs> yeah. So this is using the app that I'm in at the moment for this piece is uh, something called Fourscore. Um, F O R again. We'll put that. We'll put that in. I'll just write this down. It's going to be a very long blog tomorrow, uh, but it will be mostly links for you all, so that you can all just go and have a, have a little look. It's called Four Score. I'm sure a lot of you have used it. Um, I use it sometimes, and this is a, a, a PDF that I have already on my computer, and I've just loaded it really easily into Four Score. Um, and and there we go the other things you can do of course if once you've got that there let's just go to the page and for example i could go to flash note derby and we could get all the kids to play in flash note derby or we can go to i'm looking for a new one that's oh there's note maker that's the one i wanted to show you so this is a very easy way of sending through a compressed audio file because you'll find that audio file and um, sorry video files they're enormous they're absolutely enormous so you want to try and limit how many you're sending via well we transfer you know things like that our ways but with note maker there is uh, it compresses it for you so you just easily send you know here's uh i haven't got i don't think yeah i haven't got that there sorry that wasn't quite what i was expecting um it's because i i'm pressing on the wrong place that's why <laughs> um and sometimes the sound doesn't always work here so let's see whether that's no no i didn't think it was working um but that's fine because it works when i'm playing it in in a different situation yeah, yeah. okay so note maker really good way of of sharing that and um i'm going to keep going because there was one other thing oh yes it was the piano safari um reading cards here we go that i've just been exploring super score here we go super score is the other thing there we go and now these are the piano safari um sight reading cards which you can buy they're available to buy as are lots of lots of other um things on this app super score and you know you you can have that there and you can be the student can either have them as well or you can be pointing things out um to them via that super score app um i think that's really super it would be because it's super score um so <laughs> sorry you can see sorry getting a bit uh recently purchased collections i always forget exactly as i say this is all very new to me at the moment this one so yeah you can you can buy tons and tons and tons of of all sorts of music on here but i can never quite remember so far how to do that somebody out there probably knows but all scores yeah probably the little one at the top would work wouldn't it there we go <laughs> i've worked it out so you can see all the publishers are represented here and you can just go online and yes it's a purchase but then you've got it on your on your ipad and that you can use yeah okay yeah no. right <laughs> I'm just going to stop that share. So that was using Air Server via my iPad. That's amazing, isn't it? What we can do these days. You know, if this had happened 10 years ago, mm -hmm. we'd have been stuck. We wouldn't have been doing any of these things, really. It would have been very, very basic. Yeah. So, oh, group lessons. We were going to talk very briefly about group lessons, weren't we, Sharon? Yeah, we were. And I know we do need to come to then a little bit more in terms of what because i think there's been another question about um what the students and parents need to know and yeah getting with them yeah so i think 
thank you to everybody for sticking with us because I know, you know, I think we'll probably try and wrap up by half past. Should we set ourselves that goal, yeah. Sharon? Yeah. yeah. I know there's so many, so many different questions and things um, that, that are going on here. Um, and I know you're all communing very, very nicely with each other. So um, there will be a, a, a replay available. Yes, that will get sent out to all people who yeah. registered, but it will also be available on YouTube. So thank you all so much um, for, for taking part in this. Um, group lessons. I think group lessons is another really interesting area that we can be discussing as a profession. How well or not well group lessons work? Do you have I mean, I would imagine, I'm thinking about this, that all pupils are in their houses and they come online, let's say via Zoom, you can have each of them on their own little individual window. And that, that would probably work. Uh, what exactly you would do with them, I think you would need to consider very, very mm. carefully. Um, you can't have them playing together because the time lapse will just not work. You know, things like clapping rhythms, you know, you're, you're seeing me do that probably one or two seconds after I've actually done it. So clapping rhythms together and stuff like that, duet work, just not, not feasible. So any thoughts about group lessons would be super. Um, and I, I, I say, I think we're just all in research mode. Let's, let's work out what is going to work. And probably six months down the line, we will know an awful lot more about teaching the piano online as a profession. Mm. Yeah? We'll be really good at it. Off bench activities. Oh yeah, come on Sharon, because you were going to talk about Simon Says and, and rapid response games and things. Uh, yes, yes, okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, just a, and this is actually an idea. Someone actually earlier mentioned um, something about um, grade one, grade two students. Can't remember who that was, but I've just I noted down that the comment came in. Um, and Sally and I have very, very recently, within the past couple of weeks, we have launched a grade one um, toolkit for piano teachers who are preparing their students. And inside there, um, there are lots of ideas that actually, Sally, would you agree that lots of the ideas would actually work particularly well with online, with online learning? Yeah. Um, yeah one I of would, the ideas yeah. was, um, you know, how do you, in the, in the run up to an exam, get a student to be able to, you know, they, they know their scales, they know their arpeggios, broken chords, but how do you get them to not sit there and think about it? Because obviously there is quite a lot to process. Um, you know, it's it's the, the D minor scale, right hand, and they've got to, you know, there's there's so many processes have to go on. Um, so I come up uh, with this game, Simon Says. And, you know, so for example, Simon Says, put up your right hand. Simon Says, you know, put your thumb on D. Simon Says, and you can come up with, you can write a list of things and you can quick fire these at the students. And then of course, when mm. the teacher doesn't say Simon says and just says, you know, play a G. <gasps> okay, so like how many can they, um, can they get within 90 seconds is the idea for the game. So that's just one idea that we have. It's inside that particular course um, and it would work really nicely. I mean, other things that we can do um, if we're finding that the, the sound of the piano is going underwater, um you know what what is the fifth note of the g major scale and it's just little simple things that is really getting them to think about things um so and yes donna's here saying can beginners be taught online absolutely i mean i've done little rhymes and chants and songs online um and again like with what sally's just been saying about sending them through a video and videos take literally seconds. We're not talking about, you know, videos that are 15 minutes long. We're talking about, we just demonstrate something. And I know here at The Curious Piano Teachers, we've often said that so often what we send our students home with is a notebook full of written text. But of course, what we're, we've just delivered is a music lesson. And there's nothing more powerful than to be communicating via the music. So, you know, sending videos out, um, really, really, I, I just, I just think there are so many exciting opportunities to really deepen our, our students' learning. So, um, 
Yeah, what we will be doing, um, what Sally and I have literally this, this morning just decided to do, obviously in our members area, we have um, over 50 curiosity boxes. And there are, I mean, for example, we had rhythm flashcard games that came out just a couple of months ago. Those are the, the ideal sort of thing that you can do in online lessons. So we are for our members, we're gonna to put together a, not a definitive list, but a list of things from the boxes that you can use as, as immediate go-to resources. Because there is so much off-bench activities that you can do. Um, and there is so much that you can do that will actually keep the interest and, and engagement of your student as well. So. Sharon, if you don't mind, I'm just going to, I'm just going to share uh, one of those arpeggio videos that I was talking about because I just yeah, remember yeah. they're on my laptop. Okay, so great. this is what this is the type of thing we're talking about. I don't know whether you'll be able to hear this or not. Help in the fingering and the space between each finger. So, so this is already said what the notes are. Let's just revise that. C, about one. E, two minutes long yeah this is me just introducing now, and this is the first of pages, five videos we're going to use fingers one two three and then for one octave five at the top and i do like that overhead and view notice that so clear one and two has that major third finger two and three have a minor third and a really important important thing is to okay. remember that you don't need to stretch out like that because you don't need to play all the notes you start with your hand in a lovely that lovely duck beak position all the fingers closed up together so you play finger one on c then just extend finger two to e finger three to g and finger five to c okay yeah I'm stop there Sally, I, oh, um, here's another thing that I, I really like. With these videos, what happens is we think very carefully about how we present them. So, you know, we're slightly more thoughtful in the way we put together the words. We send it out and the, and the student can watch it, not just once. They can watch it again and again and again. Um, and I know if that seemed a little bit underwater, obviously it's a lot clearer, it's just because we were streaming that. Um, so I, I do think that the, the possibilities for really deepening learning um, for students are just, it, is, are, it is powerful, it is yeah. powerful. So let's just very quickly turn our attention then to you know how you tackle the parents um, and how you get the parents on side. I, I think you again you, you need to make these decisions that we've already talked about about what equipment you're going to use and particularly how you're going to do it. Are you going to be using FaceTime? Are you going to use Zoom? Are you going to use Skype? And make sure maybe have a little experiment as we suggested with somebody else, whether that's another teacher that you can partner up with and you can try it with each other um, or or a parent that you you are particularly friendly with or happy with and that they are happy to be a guinea pig. Yeah, because then you need to give the parents some advice on how to set up the equipment in the best way that they can, you know. Um, I would say a lot of parents will be aware of the different options and I think they very quickly will be because schools are going to be requesting this as well yeah um, and I, I think you know parents tend to be especially younger than me anyhow um, parents tend to be more on the younger side and so they they possibly are a lot more uh, familiar with all the technology and things and if it's a teenage student then they're probably very familiar with it so i think get just even create a little video for yourself that you can share with parents this is what i've done to set up my equipment what you're going to need to do is set up your equipment so that we can see the keyboard and so that the student is able to see me as well as um, the, the the keyboard as well yeah yeah. Or you could even have a little, if, if you use Zoom, you could host a short webinar um, and, and talk through some of the issues that are, that are going on there. 
we are going to be thinking a lot more about this actually with the members of our community because we're we're here to kind of serve them and we're all going to put our heads together really and see if we can come up with some really good uh, practical advice that we can do to help those parents are there going to be parents that resist you i think there probably are to be honest i'm not sure what you can do about it except as one of our community members said you know that that she said well you know i'm happy to give you a refund I don't think you'll find there, there'll be that many because actually I don't think they're going to have very much of an option when it comes to school. It's, it's exactly yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. And I think, I think my, in terms of just general tactics, I think you go in not offering, you know, if you want to, if you don't want to kind of being really quite decided that, you know, this is, this yeah. is what will happen and just kind of laying it out. Mm. Um, because when you give people the option to pull back, then um, I don't think as piano teachers, we're doing ourselves any favors. And really we do want that learning to continue for our students in the same way that schools want the learning to continue for, for their students as well. So um, I do think that we, we kind of lay it out and say that you know this, this is how it's going to be because the more choices you give, um, the more complex you make everything and the more people kind of want to step away. So I think just laying it out clearly and saying, um, you know, either this is going to be happening as of from a certain date or, you know, this is what will happen if I find the need to close my studio. But I do think ultimately, let's remember, this is not about our own safety, our students' safety. It's about our loved ones, the vulnerable people around us, and I do think that we, we certainly have to be very sensible in the decisions that, that we make. Yeah, yeah. So we don't know really what lies ahead of us at this moment in time, do we? But um, I think if we can all work together as a profession to provide the best service we can and remember that music is a thing of beauty and it can bring light and it can also bring relief into what is otherwise you know really really difficult times for myself i'm looking upon this whole new thing as of teaching as as, as a, a challenge as something to be nice and curious about and i'm thinking i'm going to discover quite a lot i'm also looking at it from myself as a way of thinking <gasps> good you know I can actually do some more reading I can actually play the piano more often possibly you know and looking at it from myself as how I can develop myself professionally during this time when possibly I'm going to be more homebound than 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 I would normally yeah. and um, you know and I think it's important that we all stay connected and that we all stay in touch if you are new to the curious piano teachers do please sign up to our, our mailing list because that will keep you in touch every single week with what we're doing and what, what is going on with the Curious Piano Teachers. As Sharon has said, you know, we are going to be developing more on this topic, but that will be within our community. And, you know, if you want to come and join us, then you know that you, you're more than welcome. You really are. But at the very least, you know, just, just, just join us in the, um, uh, for our newsletter and, and go and like us on YouTube and stuff like that. Do keep in touch anyhow, because it's so important that we all, we all feel it's a big hug going out to everybody who's come along. It is indeed. And I'm just going to, um, in final, say um, it's been lovely to have Ben Crossland, the composer, on the call. And um, he's just saying, I'm hopeful that the opportunity for practice will significantly increase, if nothing else. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Ben, for that. That's really I lovely to have you here. A wonderful and way um, to finish optimistically that we will actually get to the piano more, us ourselves as well. We will, yeah, yeah, yeah. And thank you to everybody who's made some fantastic, really, really valuable contributions. And, and I will go through all those chats and just make sure that I've got all the really important points added to a blog. Okay, Sharon. I think that's like, it, isn't it? It is indeed. Thank you so Keep much. Keep safe. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for being here on the call. Uh, the webinar replay will be going out by email a little bit later on this afternoon. 
And um, as Sally just said, please stay safe. Let's heal all Okay. Yeah. Bye for now. Yeah. Bye bye.